Hey, welcome to the Freeze Dry Business Channel. My name is David and I run a freeze dry business in Idaho. I started this channel to connect the freeze drying business community with the tools and resources needed to grow a sustainable business. And a sustainable business is one that works well with your lifestyle and still maintains that side hustle or that profitability that you're looking for. In today's video, I'm gonna answer the question that gets asked a lot in the freeze drying community, which is, does candy actually lose its weight when you put it in the freeze dryer? We're gonna find out and I've got some candies to show it. Let's get started. Hey, a question that's asked by a lot of people in the freeze drying community is, does candy lose weight when you freeze dry? Because as with fruit and vegetables and other types of foods, if there's moisture in it, the freeze drying process removes that moisture and therefore you're losing a lot of that water weight and you're left with more of that crunchy, airy, lightweight texture that we all love with the fruit and things like that. Now, does candy have moisture in it? Well, we're gonna find out with the four candies that I have chosen out for today to freeze dry and we're gonna test the gross weight and then we're gonna see what it's like with the net weight. I saw in a recent Facebook post of someone that articulated what the freeze dryer process actually does to candy and I wanna read that to you. Freeze dried candy is different from freeze drying other foods. You really aren't using the freeze dryer to remove moisture from candy. Instead, candy is done by heating the product enough to soften the sugars and then removing vacuum pressure so all that sugar structure is able to expand out and create a more crispy, airy texture. At the same time, the very low pressure lowers the boiling point of the sugar to basically nothing, helping with the expansion of the product. Now through this process of freeze drying, the newly expanded sugar structures slowly, quote, set in their more crispy state, expanded form. Now this is why when you pull out something too early, it might deflate and lose some of that puff you're trying to achieve. And you have to let it set up before you pull it out. Now, properly dried or quote expanded candy won't return to its original form again when exposed to air as it isn't reclaiming moisture that was there prior. Candy can get old and stale, and what we found is that older candy sometimes gets less crispy and more crunchy, if that makes sense. So that is what happens during the freeze drying process with candy, is that you're expanding it. So we're gonna test that out today, and we're gonna see what these four different candies do in the freeze dryer from gross to net weight. I hope you enjoy, let's get started. All right, I've got a cutting board for the Jolly Ranchers and the High Chews and the Charleston Chews. What we're gonna do first is the Skittles. So how much does Skittles weigh to start out with? Well, I've got this tub of Skittles. These tubs are fairly common for everyone to buy. You can get a Costco, Sam's Club, things like that. There's 54 ounces gross weight in these tubs, but we're gonna weigh, um, let's do two pounds and then we'll put it on a tray and then we'll see what the net weight is after we put it in the freeze dryer. So let's go ahead and open it up and put it on the tray. All right, so to weigh the Skittles, I'm gonna take this bowl here and I'm gonna put it on the scale and then I'm gonna tear it off so that way we don't calculate the actual weight of the bowl. We're just calculating what I'm putting in here, which is the Skittles. Yeah, that's 32.9, to be exact here, 32 ounces. All right, now let's put them on the tray. Bingo! Now, I usually don't do this many Skittles on a tray, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna do the two pounds, and then we're gonna see how it turns out for the net ounces. So let's go ahead and put this in the freeze dryer. All right, next up we're gonna do some Charleston Chews. Now these Charleston Chews I just picked up, they're the minis, so I'm gonna unwrap uh, four boxes of these and we're gonna see. So it's 3.5 ounces and we're gonna do four boxes. So that comes out to seven times two, so it's 14 ounces, so almost a pound, but we'll just do that uh, first. Charleston Chews are really fun. You can buy these mini ones. I did a video on Charleston Chews um, talking about the rollers. And I really like these ro the rollers and I also like these minis too. Uh, this is the first time I've done these minis, but I like the size right now because you can also uh, them on the tray and you don't really have to unwrap any wrappers. Now, if you haven't done Charleston Chews, they're really, really tasty. 
They just are a little bit more expensive to buy, so that's why I don't do it all the time. But they're really, really tasty. So this is 14 ounces gross. Let's go ahead and put it on the tray. And normally I don't do this many together, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna keep it like this. Now, knowing how close these are together, and if you've watched any videos of mine in the past, um, I do not like how close these are together. I know that these are gonna expand and they're gonna end up touching each other. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and do two trays. And then let's just kind of line them up so that they look a little bit more uniform. So for this one, I'm, I'm looking at it, it's about seven, seven across. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm just gonna keep doing that while I talk to you guys about what's just been happening in my life. Um, <laughs> to be completely transparent, I just have this new job. I work in sales doing uh, learning and development software. So like e-learning, things like that. It's an awesome job with a great company. And uh, I just do this on the side, but I, I really like talking to all of you through video and hearing all the different comments that you guys take. I really appreciate that. Um, also, I've got two young kids under the age of uh, three, so it's definitely kept me busy late nights, early nights, multiple wake-ups. Everyone who has kids understands that. So um, I haven't been able to, to get a whole lot of videos out, but I'm doing this because it's important for me to get information out to you guys so that you can be better equipped to run a freeze-dried business. I do really like these uh, Charleston Chews Minis. Um, each one of these caught, I, I found a deal, it was like four for five dollars for these. So um, I just picked up four of them. And so what, for a dollar 25, it cost me. Now, as far as the business goes for me, it's really started to pick up in terms of wholesale orders. So if you wanna get into wholesale, I do think it's worth it. I did a video recently about five, or no, 10 things I would do uh, to, before I started a freeze-dried business. Go ahead and check out that video. And one of the things I mentioned is that if you wanna look into doing commercial, it really opens the door for doing wholesale. You can find shared commercial kitchens like I'm in. I don't own this facility, but I have a really good rate to rent it and it provides everything that I need. So I took out about five here. So I've got two trays of Charleston shoes. This is great. Again, well, actually I'm gonna take those five because I did say that it was, I was gonna do all of it. So I'm just gonna put them here. All right, so here's 14 ounces of Charleston shoes. Let's put it in the freeze dryer and then let's do high chews and Jolly Ranchers. All right, next up, let's do high chews. Now, I did a high chew video on my very first video on this channel. I am gonna weigh about a pound of the high chews and then put them on the tray, but I'm also going to cut them up with these uh, Cutco scissors. Now, if you don't have Cutco scissors, really suggest you invest in them. I've got a link in the description that you can buy off of Amazon. Man, these are super durable, always sharp. You can use them not just for freeze drying, but anything else, and these have been a lifesaver. Now, I'm gonna weigh this with the wrappers. I don't see it being too much more additional gross weight, so bear with me on the net. It might give or take, you know, a couple of uh, tenths of some ounces. Sweet, 16 ounces, that's one pound. All right, now let's get it prepped. All right, so with the high chews, what I like to use again is these Cutco scissors. I like dumping all of the uh, candy on the wrappers, and then I just like going to town and cutting off the ends. It's the fastest way that I've found. And what I do is I kind of start at one side and I just keep cutting, keep cutting the ends and getting as fast as I can. I'll show you at the end of this how I kind of quickly get the candies out. The high chews has been a really good seller for me. What I also found about high chews is right now it's kind of room temperature and they're just coming out of the wrappers, right? If you prep all five trays, if you have a large freeze dryer and you leave them out on the counter, they kind of actually start getting more soft. And what that does in the freeze dryers, it makes them puff even more. They expand to double their size. So, that provides a little bit more options for you to decide 
you know, how do you want your high chews that are freeze dried to look like. Now all of these are cut. I'm gonna just basically kind of like smash and kind of grab them all. And it kind of gets all the candies that are loose. It just kind of loosens them up. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, the candies are kind of out of like 50% of the wrappers. So now what I do is I just take all the wrappers, I just toss them aside. So that way you can get to the ones that still have the candies in them. And this is really as fast as you can go. <laughs> all right, so here's all the high chews. Now, I do like kind of just lining up the high chews. For sake of time, I'm not really gonna keep these more organized. I'm just gonna do kind of bunched up and then separate it so you can kind of see the difference. So let's get these in the freeze dryer. All right, next up is Jolly Ranchers. Um, don't use the name Jolly Rancher. Um, there's been plenty of talk around about how Hershey is, is really cracking down on using the Jolly Rancher name. Just come up with a different title. You can still say it in the ingredients, you know, and things like that. Now I'm gonna do Jolly Ranchers. I'm gonna measure out a pound of these and then we'll cut them and, and then put them in the freeze dryer. All right, 16 ounces exactly. That's perfect. All righty, so here's the Jolly Ranchers. Now, what I like to use is I like using a knife. I found it to be the most efficient, but I am gonna be doing a future video on some other tools that I purchased that I've heard have done very well for being efficient cutting Jolly Ranchers. So I'm gonna try those in a future video. Be on the lookout for that. But for now, let's go ahead and cut the Jolly Ranchers. Now, I like doing Jolly Ranchers in half. Um, that's just worked the best for me. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm kind of setting them aside and even though I measured out 16 ounces, I'm going to just kind of see how much uh, gets on the tray about halfway through here so that uh, I don't bunch them up. I don't really like candy that touches other candy, um, especially Jolly Ranchers. I like having them individually as they are with the flavors so that when I take them out, they're not all bunched up together and watermelon isn't touching blue raspberry, things like that. I'm gonna set these other Jolly Ranchers aside. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll take the wrappers out of these Jolly Ranchers, and then I'm gonna reweigh these and see how much the, the ounces are and see how much space we have in between them once we kind of organize them. Jolly Ranchers have been really fun for everybody, I think, in the freeze drying business community. So if you're starting out, it's in my top 20 items to sell as a freeze dry business, just because it looks really cool and it tastes great. It's just like a huge burst of flavor as a texture. You crunch it, all of a sudden the flavor hits immediately. So it's really good. So as you can see, <laughs> taking all these wrappers out, I'm just going a little bit slower just because I'm talking to you guys, but if I'm in a rush, you know, I'm, I'm definitely trying to be a lot faster. Now, uh, these are at room temperature. When it gets the heat in the summer or you're maybe just doing this where the AC just isn't working right in your commercial kitchen or even at your house, you're gonna find that the wrappers stick. I line them up just like I did the Charleston shoes and to the um, high shoes. Now I'm doing six across and you kind of have to do Jolly Ranchers yourself a couple of times to understand how much they expand because it's really hard to describe to you right now until these are done and you kind of have to just kind of look at the size of the ones that you cut and just kind of say oh you know like this is enough space or this is not but what i where i'm spacing these about right now which is maybe like a half inch from each row you know that's kind of i would say your kind of guideline what you don't want to do is get them super uh, close because it just is going to expand quite a bit. And then, you know, you have blue raspberry touching grape and uh, apple touching strawberry, stuff like that. So we are gonna have to take some off with this. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, David, aren't you gonna weigh this? Yes, I am. I just wanted to kind of see how many of these would fit on the tray, and then I'm gonna weigh it. This right here on the tray is what we're going to weigh again. Okay, um, I know that this is repetitive, but for the sake of this video and for all of you, 
I'm gonna make sure we're accurate. Pieces. Oh wow, almost it cut in half. So it, it was eight, it's eight ounces um, on the scale. So that's what we're gonna do for the freeze dryer. We're gonna see how much it comes out net weight based off of eight ounces. in the freeze dryer okay so now that it's all kind of warmed up now it does say 49 degrees we're going to select this on so now the high temperature candy process is on and then what we're going to do is we're going to close the drain valve we're going to press continue and then it says warming trays i do not warm the trays i really don't think it's necessary unless you have like a hard candy like peppermints candy corns things like that but for these in particular you do not need to warm the trays we're going to set it to three hours of dry time so that's plenty of time for it to heat up to 135 and then start the freeze drying process hey one thing with my experience with freeze drying this is really going to help you out is i have a large freeze dryer from harvest right and when i put the trays in for the candies i actually arrange them in a specific order but that top and bottom freeze drying trays they just don't they just aren't as consistent with freeze drying in terms of drying and making those candies pop as the middle three racks skittles i've always had success with the bottom rack high chews also haven't really been uh, inconsistent no matter where I put on there. So I put the high chews and the Skittles on those bottom and top rack. Now in the middle I put the Charleston chews, both of those trays, and then I also put the Jolly Ranchers. Now you'll find with Jolly Ranchers that the top rack and the bottom rack, when you do all five trays, both of those tray sectors will actually not freeze dry well and they won't puff up. That's why I have these trays arranged in that specific order because the middle trays just do better, especially with Jolly Ranchers. All right, so we're gonna press skip on not warming the trays and then we're gonna get this freeze dryer started and then we're gonna wait three hours and get them out and see what that net weight is for freeze drying candy. All right, so this is the freeze dried Skittles. Now we did two pounds of these freeze dried Skittles. Let's go ahead and put these into this bowl and then let's weigh it and actually see if two pounds gross weight changes after freeze drying Skittles. All right, so here's the net weight for freeze-dried Skittles. That's two pounds, so again, we put in 32 ounces and it resulted in 31.3. So this just means that whatever you put in the freeze dryer for Skittles in terms of weight, you're gonna get the exact same out freeze-dried. All right, next up, we're gonna do the high chews. Now, high chews are great. They turn into these not completely double the size, but they're super crunchy. I think these are really good. And so what we did is we did one pound of these high chews and I'm gonna put the bowl on here. I've already teared it off. Oh, awesome, okay. So this came out a little bit more equal. It is about 1.5 ounces difference with the high chews after freeze drying, but we can kind of say that maybe it's exactly the kind of the same as the Skittles. All right, so now the Charleston Chews. Now these were the Charleston Chews Mini. It seems like there's, well, it says there's, there's 34 pieces which is pretty awesome. Um, I think I would probably advise everyone to buy those Charleston Shoes minis boxes if you wanna do Charleston Shoes. Now, what you're seeing here, lightly trying to pull up the Charleston Shoes because they do stick to the tray. They don't kind of roll off like those high chews did in Skittles. If you want them to stay intact, remain like you're seeing here, uh, then you want to be delicate with pulling them up because otherwise they get like this, where it's like kind of broken off versus the whole one like this, which I'm being a little bit more delicate, you know, pulling up. So I'm just going to loosen these up. All right, I'm going to put the bowl on, tear it off here. For 
these Charleston shoes from 14 ounces gross was 12, so they lost two ounces. Very similar, not a whole lot of weight lost, so you're kind of getting another equal in terms of that candy. All right, here's the Jolly Ranchers. Now, if you've never seen Jolly Ranchers, expand and you're new to freeze drying this is why people start freeze drying candy it's so awesome that hard candy turns into the crunchiness so good all right so let's go ahead and tear off the bowl and let's start putting these jolly ranchers into the bowl So we started out with eight ounces of Jolly Ranchers when we put it in the freeze dryer. Let's see what it came out to. Oh, right, just about equal, wow. So even though the Jolly Rancher has turned into more of a textured form, it came out to the exact same weight, which is awesome. Wow, that was awesome. That really surprised me that every single candy that we did from the Charleston Chews, the Jolly Ranchers, the Skittles, as well as the High Chews, all of them really kept the same amount of weight. They didn't really lose any weight, which comes back to that same point that candy doesn't really have moisture. You're really just expanding that sugar and the freeze dryer is heating it up and also with the vacuum, you're changing just the form of the texture so you're not really losing anything, which is great. Now, why is this important to know for your business? Well, now we know weight is equal to the amount that we actually go out and buy. So with Skittles, if we have that 54 ounce tub of Skittles, now that we know that if we put in five ounces of freeze-dried Skittles in our bag, we're really gonna get about 10 bags after freeze-drying, which makes it really easy for you to calculate and forecast how much you need to buy, as well as you need to bag, and what kind of production and ROI you're gonna get out of each individual cycle. The same goes for the Charleston Shoes and Jolly Ranchers, is you just know exactly what's going in there versus not. So I hope this video was helpful. I know it's gonna be helpful for me. I actually already knew that about Skittles, but I wanted to share it with you and um, take that information, apply it to your business. I hope it helps you. Hey, thanks for joining me on this video. I wanna just do a quick plug on some of the things that you need to know about my channel and myself. If you're planning on buying a Harvest Right freeze dryer, please use the affiliate link below. It's a direct link to harvestright.com, but it also calculates direct referrals from me and myself. Also, there's a ton of other links to different tools and resources that I use for my own business that I would suggest that you use as well through Amazon. So go ahead and use those links and as well as check out more of my videos on my channel. All of the information is free available to you and I hope you enjoy it. Hit the subscribe button or like or comment on this video. We'll see you next time on the freeze dry business channel. Thanks a lot.